BioBalance HealthCast, Episode 148, Hormone Replacement FAQ, Part 1. BioBalance HealthCast features conversations about positive aging. Your hosts are Dr. Kathy Maupin, Medical Director of BioBalance Health and a leading expert in treating symptoms of aging, and Brett Newcomb, a licensed professional counselor. We've been doing these podcasts for almost three years, and in the course of that, I've learned a lot about hormone replacement therapy and about your business and the way it works. Um, but it, it intrigues me that you started as a gynecologist and you evolved into focusing on hormone replacements because of the issues that women who were uh, menopausal mm -hmm. and postmenopausal were having mm -hmm. that nobody seemed to treat, fell in the gaps. Between, nobody knew how to treat. Nobody knew how to treat. Including me. And, and then <laughs> as you were successful in learning how to treat that, there began to be a demand from these women that you also look at what was going on with their husbands. Right. And so now your practice is both male and female, and mm -hmm. I don't know what the balance distribution of that is, but there, uh, as you look at the mass of literally thousands of people that have come through your mm -hmm. office in the last 10 years for this treatment, um, there are a lot of questions that you get asked repeatedly, and some of those you've posted under frequently asked questions mm -hmm. on your website. So I thought that today we would go through some of those for our audience uh, and give you an opportunity to discuss in more detail what mm -hmm. what those questions mean, what, what people are concerned about, mm -hmm. and what your response to that is. And most of these questions are from people who have not done the pellets. Uh -huh. So when they first come they, or call. When the, yeah. yeah, when they're looking at, should I do this, should I not do this? So mm -hmm. this is as if the blank slate, they, they are just deciding whether they want to do this or not. So we're writing the frequently asked questions for that. We could write another set of frequently asked questions for people who who have already had the pellets, but they come in and ask us those questions every day. Mm -hmm. So we just limit it to the ones that people have never seen us and want to know, does does it hurt? Does it, I mean, you know, all the yeah. questions that yeah. we have listed and how often do you get them and how long do they last? What happens to them? So you're going to go through them and we're going to talk about each one right. of them. Right. And, and so when people... I know you market and, and you have a, mm -hmm. a whole marketing system to get the word out about who you are and what you do. Mm -hmm. But this is a non-standard uh, sort of treatment and mm -hmm. there are not a lot of doctors who do it and there are not a lot of doctors who really seem to know anything about it. They're becoming a lot of doctors that do it because so many people come back to their gynecologist and say, I'm better, I'm better, I found the answer. Right. And so, so many doctors are like, oh well, this looks pretty easy, I think I'll just throw some pellets in, which is exactly the wrong attitude because right. it's really complicated. Well, Brain surgery form. looks really easy <laughs> if somebody knows how to do it. Right. But this is, and this is not brain surgery, but it is not easy. Yeah. Because Well, we, and it flies in the face of mass production medicine. Right. And you have to spend some time with somebody to learn about their lifestyle choices and their personal habits and Diet, history, exercise. Yeah, all of those things. All of those things and what they want out of it. I mean, mm -hmm. I always want to know what is it that you came for? What's the most important thing? Most people say everything I listed as my symptoms, and and but some so, people just want to feel better. Some I had someone yesterday that said, I just want to have my my personality back. I don't feel like myself. Mm -hmm. I feel like I'm someone else in my in a body that's not my own. Mm -hmm. You know. So and and I'm confident that she will. She and by what she had in terms of her lab, what her uh, symptoms were, I'm confident that she'll be all better. With, yeah. with the pellets. Yeah, no, I, I understand that. As I have aged, I have found that I get really frustrated when I can't command my body to do things mm -hmm. that it used to do easily and readily. Mm -hmm. I remember being in France visiting some friends and we were hiking to the top of a mountain and they were all a lot younger than I am and, and they were just running up the mountain and I was struggling <laughs> to get up and I was just willing myself to get to the top of the mountain, mm -hmm. but it was really difficult. Mm -hmm. uh, and it, and it would have been impossible be. without without yeah. muscles and testosterone, so. Well, I got there. Uh, <laughs> I didn't have a heart attack, I didn't die, but, but I That's don't good. like that. I don't like not having my body be alert and alive and responsive in ways that I remember it being mm -hmm. when I was much younger. And we do remember that. Yeah. It's you, one of those things, you, you don't remember it until you come up against it. Like, I didn't, I used to run all the time, mm -hmm. but I stopped running because my dad's knees went 
totally, they, they were horrible. They needed to be replaced. <laughs> Wait, but you stopped running because your dad's knees went Yes, out. because I was never going to be that. Okay. I was never having that surgery. I was never going to do that, so I stopped running. So yeah. I was running with the dogs the other day, and granted, it was 90 degrees, which was not very smart, but I was running with the dogs, running, walking, running, walking, right. and I was just like, I felt like I was in someone else's body running. It didn't yeah. feel so fluid like it used mm -hmm. to. It didn't mm -hmm. feel, I, my muscle memory wasn't there yet, so I'm going to have to, I'm not doing what he did, which was just run miles and miles and hours a day. Yeah. I'm just going to run with the dogs and walk in between and run. When they get tired, I get tired. Right, and listen to your body. And yes, do, yeah, I mean, and not ignore the signs. So I'm going to do that, but I have to retrain my muscles. Now I have the muscles to do it. If I would have done this before pellets, I could never have run. I was barely able to walk without losing, going, getting out of breath. So when do you get to the place when you're interviewing a patient or one's interviewing you to say, mm -hmm. oh, I, I want to do this, where you ask them, what is it you want to get out of this? Is it after you've gone through these other kinds of pieces of information, or is that a place that you start in the discussion of, tell me what's going on in your life and how you're feeling? I, I usually ask them when, the, when they've already filled out a form of all their symptoms. And, and those forms are all on the, on the website. And they're on you the website. So they filled go. out the medical problems that they have, the medicines they're on, allergies, things like that. So I basically, before they walk in the room, I have all of their vital information. So what I want to know is, how did this start? Mm -hmm. When did this start? Mm -hmm. What happened first? What was your first symptom? Because it's, it's the story that helps me know how it impaired their life and, and which, how much of which hormone they need. Right. So it's not just hormone levels, uh -huh. it's their life and how this is affecting it. Somebody who's always sedentary is not going to say, oh, I need to go run around, run, run a mile or, or do a 5K. They just want to be able to think, mm -hmm. you know, so that's their biggest thing and that's the thing they notice first. So I want to know what they notice first, what I should be attending to when talking to them, and then tie that in with the things, the information I need to do their to do their treatment, which is I need to know how much activity because of their, the, the pellets will dissolve faster if you are exercising every day for an hour or because more. Because they are, they, they follow your body's natural metabolic consumption. Yes. So if you run your body harder, they consume more. Quickly. Right. The blood flow flows past them faster mm -hmm. and they dissolve faster mm -hmm. and you need it too because right. when we exercise, we need more testosterone, so more estrogen. It's sort of a demand system. Right. It's, yeah. it's not as good as God gave us, but it's, it's better than anything else out there. Yeah. So, and it's much more based on your demand. So, I ask them that so that I know how to dose, but also I need to know if they're healthy. I need to know how they eat. I, you know, if they come in and say, I haven't lost any weight in, mm -hmm. you know, in six mm -hmm. months, but they're eating a lot of fast food, carbs, drinking alcohol every night, that no, no amount of hormone is ever going to help them lose weight. Right if they, they're doing, they have a bad lifestyle. So I always have to look at the lifestyle as well. And so I try to add that to the treatment. So not only do we replace the hormones and look at your entire health history, but I also look at lifestyle changes you should make to be healthy. I mean, it doesn't help me one bit to give you hormones if you're not healthy. So I, and nobody does this anymore. Nobody looks at your whole picture and says, right. these are the things you need to do. Right. These are the tests you need. These are, th go to your doctor to do this and, and, and take these supplements. These are the supplements you need or you need to be this weight. So those are the things that we try to offer that is not just hormone therapy, it's preventive medicine. It's kind of holistic. It's holistic and yeah. it's preventive medicine. We don't take care of hearts or lungs. We refer out if right. we find problems, but we at least go through what you need to do, what a patient needs to do to be healthy with the hormones because they give them the opportunity to be healthy. Yes. So then the next thing is that nobody else that I know of does that replaces hormones of any type is they look at all the hormones. We look at all the hormones. They don't. Mm -hmm. So we look at thyroid and cortisol and, and we look at the pituitary hormones, the prolactin, LH, FSH. All of those hormones in, are tied together. So I want to make sure they're all in line. If the cortisol is really high, testosterone doesn't feel really good. So I have to, I have to either send them to yoga, which doesn't always work. Asking patients to do things that change right. their lifestyle right. are a lot harder than treating a hormone. Well, and they'll say, oh yeah, I, I'll do that. And then you know they're not going to. Well, then and I see them again don't. and I say, yeah, oh, did you do yeah. that? Oh, you need to do that. But there are ways to help suppress the cortisol mm -hmm. 
that is spiking because you've had long-term stress. So not only do you need to change your situation, but we need to just help that hormone decrease so you can feel the testosterone and feel better. Mm -hmm. So there are a lot of things. Because it blocks right. or overrides. Right. It overrides the testosterone. Um, actually, it makes, it makes the testosterone less available. It ties up the testosterone. So mm -hmm. instead of being active, you can have a lot of testosterone, but very little of it's active. That doesn't make you feel better. So it, that's, that's why when you get a shot of cortisol, that's why we always ask, what happened last month? What, did you have an injury? Did you have surgery? Did, or the last four months, ha, what's happened? Because, or do you have a surgery plan? Because then we can adjust the hormones for it, or we can explain why it didn't feel as good. Okay. So those are things that, that we do. I mean, all of that is in the first and second visit. Hopefully, without a lot of medical problems, I can have a, a maintenance dose sort of figured out. Right. So then I'm not drawing blood every time, which is another down, um, downside of some people who don't really understand what the hormones are doing. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's a benefit of having done it for 11 years. We order it the first and the second time, and only if there's something else, thyroid or something else that needs to be looked at, do we usually need a third draw that year. And then we just do a draw every year. Yeah. And then we make sure everything's stable and that you feel good, and that we're answering, you're, we're answering your demand. What do you need well, to the feel demands, better? The demands cover such a gamut. I mean, people come in that are worried about cancer. People who come in that are worried about osteoporosis. People mm -hmm. come in that are worried because they don't have a sex drive and they used to have one. Mm -hmm. That's uh, a big one. And is. fatigue is another big one. Yeah. And fatigue, when you look at the, at the um, physician books about how do you work up fatigue, there's like, there's 20,000 things it could be, and there's like, there's like a hundred tests you could do, so you have to narrow that down. Right. But one of the things that gets better with testosterone is energy. Yeah. You feel more energetic and more motivated, which means you want to get out of the house and do things. Because like you used to when you had testosterone. So that's, so that's one of the things that you know, we have to figure out. I do a lot of testing to see, make sure that the fatigue isn't something else. Like it's not- Chronic fatigue syndrome as opposed to right. fatigue. Right, yeah. chronic fatigue is a, is a virus, and, and also anemia, mm -hmm. or B12 deficiency. That's all shown in the, in the CBC, the mm -hmm. blood count. And, but it, the people experience it or identify it as, I'm really tired. Right, or low blood sugar, or high blood sugar. I mean, yeah. I have, so I, in my panel, I've had a lot of people complain about how much blood I draw on the first panel, yeah. but that's how I know what's wrong and right. what's, whether I'm treating the right thing. If you have a high prolactin, a very high prolactin, not slightly high, a very high one, you could have a tumor in your pituitary. And so we deal with that. We send people to a doctor that will look at their pituitary and make sure there's no tum tumor there before, before or sometimes we treat them depending on how terrible they feel because the testosterone doesn't affect that. So oftentimes testosterone and estrogen we, we'll still treat, but we make sure before they get another treatment they have that worked up. Because prolactin is one of those things that goes up from um, smoking marijuana and it's one of the things that makes you gain weight when you smoke marijuana so I don't want to be treating somebody and they say hey I'm not losing weight and I'm and I ask them that question but sometimes they don't answer it because they don't want anyone to know about it if it's not legal in the state well exactly so in any case we look at these things the same hormone elevated could be a t could be a pituitary tumor or just having having um, a smoke of marijuana well and some of it can be genetic predispositions, like, like oh, yeah. the breast cancer issue. Right. And you, you've you recently affiliated with somebody that uh, you have a test that's a saliva-based test mm -hmm. to determine uh, genomes. Is right. It, Gen the genetics, right? yes. Okay. It's called pathway genomics. Uh -huh. And we right now, we're not testing for the BRCA1 and 2 for mm -hmm. the risk of breast cancer, but we're testing for um, all the things that can make you obese including the obesity gene. Sugar, I mean, sh how no, you how sugar you handle you sugar right. or, or the behavioral things you inherited. Mm -hmm. And we've talked about those before, but behavior's everything. And whether exercise is going to help you or not with your weight, sometimes yeah. it's not going to help. You'll, it's your diet. It's all diet, and it's not exercise and diet like most people. We find people who have genes for heart attack and high... high um, LDL and, and the bad cholesterols and low So, so they give you a profile printout that tells you what you're at risk for and what you're not at risk for. Mm -hmm. and, then, and then you can sit down with them and say, 
you know, given your situation, you can exercise all day long. And but you're not going to lose. Unless you're taking care of this. Unless you eat properly. Yeah. And eat the right calories. And, but that's, it's one of those things. That is not what we do initially. Right. That's one of our option treatments. Like right. people can come in and get their hormones fixed. That's basically our primary uh, goal and mission mm -hmm. is to balance all the hormones and get people back in action, back to their old selves, back to their old sexual selves, because that's very important for them. And uh, then they have the option of coming in for this genetic test to see why they can't lose weight. So when you say back to their old sexual selves, are you talking stamina, endurance, orgasm, desire? Yep, I mean, all of it. All of those things. All of it. I'm okay. talking and, about... And people, people experience that change differently. Right. You know. I mean, some people have a really... It's just like appetite. Mm -hmm. Some people have a really high sex drive. Some people barely know they have a sex drive that's kind of inherited mm -hmm. or they've been on a medication that's kept them their whole lives kept them from having much of a sex drive so right. so they're used to a certain normal and that's what we're trying to achieve we're not trying to achieve higher than normal we're not trying to achieve the normal for this guy we're trying to achieve the normal for you or for me uh, or for Romando we're trying to get all of those <laughs> Romando's behind the camera or we're trying to get the normal for for that person, not not a not an extraordinary normal. Even That's if they right. want it, sometimes people get a little ex higher level of um, of sex drive during the first in insertion, and that's because they have they don't have any testosterone, and they have all these receptor sites it's on on every yeah. cell, and They're all the receptor firing. sites are open. Yeah. Yeah. They're waiting for a little tiny bit of testosterone to come by to hit that cell. This is the best way I can describe it. It's very complicated medically, but they're 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 all so, open. Suddenly, you think you're John Holmes Jr. Yeah, <laughs> no, no, it's not that. It's more in your brain. So, oh man. <laughs> anyway, it's more in your brain than anything else, and it's more of a sex drive, and it usually lasts about a month or so until your receptor sites get used to it, mm -hmm. and then then you're back. Then you go to your normal. So I people who are fearful of this, I warn them that they may have an over, an over sexuality for a month or so, but then just keep your head down, you know, stay home, <laughs> yeah. and, and it'll go away. It's never going to happen again yeah. unless they're deprived of testosterone for years and years, and then take it. Yeah, I actually was talking to a client that, that we had in common mm -hmm. who had that experience, and they said they were really worried after it kicked in that they were just going to have this moral debacle in their lives because mm -hmm. they had become physically more uh, cued and, and alert than they ever remembered being. And they said it was just really overwhelming. And right. It's how 18-year-old boys feel all the time. <laughs> it is. It, that's, that's, you know, I mean, if you can remember being 18, but that's, that's how they describe it. Yeah. That they, they just can barely walk around without thinking about, oh, that girl's cute, you know, yeah. and, and being turned on. And so... But this doesn't happen to everybody. I don't want anybody to expect this to happen. <laughs> no. This is something that usually happens to people who have had no hormones for maybe 10 years or more, yeah. and or more no testosterone. They may have gone through menopause with five years ago, but no testosterone for 10 years. And, and it takes that kind of deprivation to get that kind of response. I had it, and I just, mm, I just stayed home. <laughs> I went to work. I stayed home. I didn't. Yeah. I kept my head down for a week, and then it was over. And I was so thankful. You just don't go out to a, a high risk environment. No, you don't go out yeah. to a bar or anything for a, you know a week yeah. or two, and then it's over. Yeah. You just torture your husband. <laughs> you know, so so which that's all. Like, which was benefit. not a bad yeah, thing. Exactly. Which isn't a bad, a bad thing. thing. So um, the men don't seem to have this. Mm -hmm. The women do. For some reason, men always have some testosterone, so they're not deprived like that. Right. So this is a, a female thing, and I can't make it happen again either. Some women come in and go, I want that to happen again. It was great. And I'm like, sorry, we'll have to wait 10 more we have, years. We have to turn it off for 10 years. You have <laughs> one, one month every 10 years. I had one patient who was mad at me. Yeah. I wouldn't redo it. Yeah. I wouldn't make that happen again. I said, that, that's an anomaly. It's not something that should happen. That's not what we're going for. So anyway, so this is, these are the things that we kind of look, you know, that we have commonly when we treat people for, um, for hormone imbalance, hormone uh, deficiency. So it's not just testosterone. It's not just a hormone. It's not just come in and, 
and get your hormone and go. Oftentimes, and my nurses help me, my nurse practitioners help me with this. They help keep track of thyroid and everything, you know, kind of balanced when patients come in for their reinsertion. So people are seen three times a year, at least, mm -hmm. and men are seen twice a year. And during those times, then they discuss. Wait, wait, wait. People are seen three I'm times sorry, a year, and are men seen... are seen twice a year. Yeah, well, they're not people. Oh, well, okay. <laughs> Just, I am jo joking. <laughs> oh, please don't write me. <laughs> I'm joking. I mean, women are, t are seen three times a year, and men are seen twice a year. So yeah. after the initial uh, evaluation and treatment and dosing. Yeah. So there's opportunities to, you know, to ask these questions. Plus, we try to keep our website up to date with all the information. We have articles. We have um, all the news articles that come on, news of, you know, news of the month. And, right. and we try to keep everybody apprised of what's going on with hormonal research, hormonal. Right. But, you know, we, just, we had just recently the, oh, yeah, we were just kidding about the WHI. Right. And then we, we had, I mean, I'm feeling really good about myself because we had two other You've articles. Been it for because years, I've been yeah. saying this for years that um, testosterone does not cause prostate cancer. Who knew? We knew. Right. Low testosterone causes prostate cancer. So it's not testosterone, it's not high levels. So we've been saying that. And then we were justified also in the fact that everybody went off hormones with the WHI study. Right. And now they found that, was it? 50,000 women or more. Well, that's what they're... <coughs> they're estimating? Yes, estimating. 50,000 women or more died because they didn't have replacement hormones after hysterectomy. Wow. And so it's necessary to have your hormones. And right now, if you look at television, they're mostly talking about men and testosterone. But honestly, for the very same reasons men need it, like it's going to keep them stronger, healthier, virile, handsome, thin and keep a bunch of different diseases at bay, like Alzheimer's and diabetes and other things yeah. like that. That's why that's what women need too, but no one's talking about it. Well, it's just like the Viagra commercial. If you take Viagra, you can go out in the backyard and throw a football through a moving <laughs> tire every time. It's incredible. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's a world of advertising. Yeah, yeah. You know, and, and obviously we have a lot to do with advertising. We, you know, we use advertising, but ours is a little bit more realistic. Yeah. And so, so what we started today was to talk about frequently asked questions, and we did do that, but not in a specific and precise way. Uh, I would like to do that. I think there's mm -hmm. benefit in doing that. So if you get a chance to come back next week and listen to our podcast, we'll go through those questions in that podcast. Thank you. Email your questions or comments to podcast at biobalancehealth.com. You can find the Biobalance HealthCast on iTunes and on YouTube. For more information about bioidentical hormone pellet therapy and other reverse aging solutions, visit biobalancehealth.com or call 314-993-0963. You can find Dr. Maupin on Twitter at Dr. Kathy Maupin and on Facebook at facebook.com slash biobalancehealth. Find Brett Newcomb at brettnewcomb.com.